Um, I really appreciate, even though I'm not a full-time student at Acadia, when I was here, I felt very welcome into the chapel, into having lunch with all the students, all the staff every Wednesday. I, I really appreciate that. So I, I feel that, yeah, the professors are human too. I, I think for, for me, it, it says a lot. Mm. So Now, I read your article, The Mission of the seminary in an age of nostalgia. Well, it was from Intrust Magazine. Intrust Magazine. Yeah. And yes, um, can you leave a link later, write down a yeah. link so I can uh, put it on my oh, description sure. of my, um, of this uh, channel so Absolutely. people can. This is a worthwhile read. Thank you. Especially <laughs> talk about the good old days. We all dream. Mm. Let's go back to the good old days. Uh, the good old days are really, is it really that good? It's old, but is it really that good? Right. <laughs> so I think that answers it. Mm. In the future of theological training seminaries, can you talk about what is your view of the future of theological training um, in Canada or as a whole, uh, especially as far as I look at some statistics, most seminary uh, schools in Canada, their enrollment mm -hmm. is in decline. Mm -hmm. And you always read about, oh, the young people are no more, mm -hmm. they don't come to church, they don't. Yeah. But in Acadia, in ADC, in Acadia Divinity, the enrollment is up, mm -hmm. especially last year I talked to one of your colleagues and uh, Chris he said I haven't seen that many people want to uh, come and have a bachelor of <laughs> theology <laughs> so it's a record enrollment um, can you talk something about what is your vision on future of uh, theological training Sure. I mean, we're very grateful, actually, that, that our enrollment is up. It's up again this year, um, mm -hmm. over last year. Um, I mean, there's lots of reasons for that. You can give lots of reasons for it, but what is my vision in the midst of it? I, I mean, I think it's true. The church is in decline in the Western world, but the church worldwide is not in decline. The church worldwide is growing. And so I think, first of all, we have to have a global view on theological education. It's not just our own little patch, it's, it's the world. Having said that, there's still our own patch, and the church in Canada has declined. The church in Atlantic Canada is declining quite severely, very quickly. Um, I, don't, I don't believe it will disappear, but, but you know, there's going <laughs> you know, to be a, a, a flattening out of that curve somewhere, and there'll be a bounce back. But... Um, I think that the role of the seminary at the moment in some ways is to provide some leadership because we are, in the context of university, mm -hmm. seminary professors are also researchers. And so mm -hmm. we teach out of our research, we, we think and we publish. And I think that means that we have an obligation to lead the church in some ways, to say, this is what we see, this is what we think is happening, mm -hmm. and, and, and thereby to feed the church as a whole so that good leaders will emerge we will again help to equip them they will be sent out in turn to to meet the challenges of a present culture to share the good news of jesus christ in ways that make sense to people that they can connect with and thereby grow the church in brand new ways churches themselves as institutions can become very moribund Right, you kind of you you repeat what's been done before because you've done it before, and it's hard to rise above that and to see the horizon. The seminary can help the church to see the horizon, you know, past what's here now. And so I do think that at this time in particular, seminaries do have an obligation to help to grow the church, and and I think that's maybe one that we haven't embraced in the past very much because the church was growing itself, um, mm -hmm. but but I think probably increasingly we have a unique role there. Um, and that will only really happen through good partnerships. Um, and there will be some seminaries that will close. There's no question. Um, 
that some will close. Um, why will they close? There'll be a whole host of reasons. It doesn't mean that anything necessarily went wrong other than their support base disappeared. Mm -hmm. And it could happen to anybody almost overnight. I'm aware of that. I think anybody from my generation onward who leads any organization is aware that everything could go very badly, very quickly. Mm. And so it's a risk to step into leadership. But yet, mm -hmm. is that not what Jesus always calls us to? Mm -hmm. Step into the risk and see uh, what, ha what can happen when you trust him in the midst of the unknown. So yes. the future of the seminary will be a place of risk and experimentation, of partnership, of nurturing and growing the church. Um, and, and, and if we don't manage to do that, then we're, we're really, we've lost our mission, mm -hmm. I think. And, and so focusing on the mission is everything, okay. really. I, I remember, maybe, you know, if you think back to when you were a student. Mm -hmm. Here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> or um, now, um, well, those were, we were a lot younger then. Mm -hmm. A lot younger then. And your classmate also, they are more or less of your same age. Mm -hmm. Some of them aren't even married. Mm -hmm. or, or, so, what happened to the trend of seminary or just student body as a whole? Like, you have students like me. Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. a blessing or is it a curse? You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe yeah. having me as a student is never good. But, <laughs> but um, I'll, I remember in class, mm -hmm. I, I was sitting beside somebody who is... 50 plus, second career, yeah. Yeah. even third career, mm -hmm. retire the second or mm -hmm. the third time. Mm -hmm. Does that, does it change your, the way of delivery mm -hmm. of your program or your mission mm -hmm. or your focus? Yeah. Well, I think that, that um, certainly the future of the seminary, if we're taking our mission seriously mm -hmm. to equip people for Christian service, what we're finding is people who are being called to Christian service are being called from lots of different contexts and, and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So for example, many people are retiring at an age young enough where they're still very well enough to serve very capably because they, they have a lifetime of experience, they've got education, uh, and so they really just need that theological education to equip them for that next stage of service. So we have people who come from high school. We have people who come uh, after their initial degree. We have people who come after a whole career who come to be equipped for ministry. And I think that's enriching of mm -hmm. the, exp the learning experience of everyone in the classroom because it just mixes up that whole experience of diversity. It is different in some ways from when I was a student, but we, we were a mixed bag too in some ways. And every year that we have um, uh, students come to us, it's a different mix. I think another thing though that is a growing edge for seminaries is providing continuing education for people in Christian service because the world is changing so quickly that it's hard to keep up, you know, and, and a lot of people who have been ministering for maybe 20, 30 years plus, they are looking at the world around them today and saying, I don't even understand what's going on anymore. I don't understand how to minister the gospel in this context. It's not what it was when I started. And, um, and I think, you know, when I came through seminary, we were taught a lot how to manage the orchard. You know, here in the Annapolis Valley, there's a lot of apple orchards. We were taught to manage the orchard. You know, you trim the, the trees this way and you pick the fruit in season and all of that sort of thing. And the problem is the trees have grown old and into themselves and some of them need to be dug up and some <laughs> new ones planted, right? And, and, and we maybe weren't given the skills to do that. We weren't really taught how to do that. And I don't know how much you can teach it, but you can certainly facilitate the learning mm -hmm. where that can happen. And, and I think that we have to be about that very much as well. Okay. Uh, facilitating the learning, not so much you know, I, I don't think seminary should ever have been, I have so much, you have nothing. Here, let me pour into you all that I know, and then you go off and do something okay. with it. You know, it, it's, it's got to be far more that we're in this place where God has assembled us. We learn together. We learn from each other. As the one who's been tasked with that and has had special opportunity to prepare, I, I can lead that and facilitate that. But, uh, but there's some great learning that can take place from one another. 
Mm -hmm. uh, from the Holy Spirit and not only from the teacher mm -hmm. who is the facilitator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. now I, when I attended um, your classes, uh -huh. you talk a lot on uh, culture, the trend, this is your, that's your major, mm -hmm. that's your research area. Uh, you talk about colonization, unjust treatment. Can you say something on social justice? Why? Because in, in your class, I remember you stress a lot on these kind of uh, cultural trends and what happened. Can you say something also on social justice and uh, um, you know, how, how, how should we as Christian um, look at social justice? Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so I grew up in a conservative church Mm -hmm. As most of us did in this part of the world, um, I, I got an excellent grounding in the scriptures. Um, but when I, when I went to university and I got my first job, I was working with the Red Cross in um, international development. And I was working with young people who decided one time, well, we were talking about issues of justice from uh, a Red Cross perspective, not a faith perspective. They decided that the world would be better off without people altogether because people have so screwed it up. And this, I mean, you know, we kind of chuckle about that, but it was devastating to me that young people thought the world would be better without them. And I thought, my goodness, my, why, where's my faith here? What does my faith have to say about this? So that really fed into my own call to ministry to come and study theology because if my faith as a biblical faith has nothing to say about these big issues, then what is it for anyway? Because when I read the Bible about Jesus, he moved around, he engaged with people, he was active, he wasn't passive, right? He was right mm -hmm. there where things were happening. And he never did what we expected him to do, but that's another story altogether. Um, so so that led to my, my beginning of study. And then as I kept studying, I mean, I ended up doing my PhD research on social ethics because it seemed to me, and I'm still convinced of this, that sometimes we had drawn this line between this is what it means to be a Christian and this is what it means to be a person, a citizen of the world. And surely what it means to be a Christian is all of that. And so I, I'm a, I firmly believe that, that Jesus has something to say about everything that mm -hmm. concerns us. And, and if we've kept Jesus out of these pockets of our, our lives, it's for our detriment. And so my question is always, you know, what, what, not just what would Jesus do? Because I think that's, we don't know what Jesus would do. He's surprising. But, but when I go about my activity in the world, when Jesus said to watch and to wait, he didn't say to sit there twiddling your thumbs, right? Mm -hmm. He showed us what, what you should do. You know what you should do to love God, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God, to seek justice, mm -hmm. right? This is part of what we've been given to do while we're waiting for Jesus' return. And we don't just twiddle our thumbs. And so, although it's not ours to bring justice to the world, that's, that's too big a burden for us. I think the Holy Spirit is already about that work. Mm -hmm. And he says, come on, let's get on board with this. Mm -hmm. the, you know, do enact the realities that we're committed to from the scriptures, um, rather than just passively wait for them to out but I know that there are different contexts for some of these things and they are expressed in different ways in different contexts but sometimes we do shy away from social action as an excuse to say well that's that's for God to do it's not for me to do but why would we say that when we don't say well it's up to God to lead everybody to, to Christ we say oh no that's our job right and so surely the things that move the heart of God move our heart as well. So I, I think there are times and places where it's abundantly appropriate for us to say, this is what justice looks like. I mean, Jesus' whole arrival on earth, he, you know, think about Mary's song. What did she sing? God, you've witnessed the poor and the downtrodden. You're, you're lifting up the poor and sending the rich away hungry. When Jesus turn, uh, arrives on the scene, he's turning the whole system upside down. Mm -hmm. And and um, the implications of that are pretty profound, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for the poor who finally get a say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. May 
Sorry, I'm preaching. Yeah, no, 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 no. Please, <laughs> please. This is what I I, I would love to to to, to yeah. um explore a, mm. a whole lot more because mm. um sometimes when we talk about um uh, uh, racism, systemic discrimination, um. That, that, that is why when I came in, I saw the welcome sign that, yes, this land is mm -hmm. um, originally mm -hmm. occupied. Mm -hmm. And we, we and as Acadia Divinity College, I'm glad to see a sign that we acknowledge yep. that this is a historical, mm -hmm. uh, this is a historical reality that we and have to accept. And it's an injustice accept. that the settlers came and never went away again. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. really. And so, I, you know, I, my family has been in this land for seven or eight generations. Mm -hmm. but, but they came as settlers mm -hmm. on land that was, that was not their own. Mm -hmm. Right? And I have to acknowledge that even now. I think it's important to acknowledge okay. that. So, yeah. Okay. Good. I think that is um, mm. the questions I, I prepare. Do you have mm -hmm. any other thing you would like to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think that one of the biggest changes, of course, that has come to theological education is the accessibility. And we've worked really hard on that. Mm -hmm. So although we, we had for a time students joining us live in class, we have, you know, online courses uh, we've worked really hard in this time to make sure that the way that we teach courses is good for people who are learning online. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we, I think that's very important, actually. And, and some places are just scrambling to sort of live stream what's happening in a mm -hmm. class, which is a very different thing from reconsidering the whole way that you teach and structure mm -hmm. a course. So I think that it's, it's, it's important for folks to know that, that we've worked really hard to keep up. <laughs> with, with the technological changes and all that sort of thing. And people have been forced into that in time of pandemic, but we were ahead of that curve, I would say. And we've, we've kept pushing and growing so that um, uh, I believe that what is being taught from Acadia Divinity College reflects the best of solid biblical interpretation engagement with culture as it is, not as we wish it was, mm -hmm. and, and meeting people where they are to be equipped in their context for service. And mm -hmm. I think it's a great mix. I wouldn't be anywhere else. I don't know why anybody would study anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. That's why I picked this place, but there are some mm -hmm. other reasons that I could not finish. Yeah. So, and uh, when this... I, I just have to... Uh, restart at some point i suppose doors open <laughs> the doors open thank you thank yeah. you